this is in Malaysia, and um, all my other 10 submission grappling highlights, there's tons of pro fighters, high-level people, um, so I roll with great people, except for this one. This is in Malaysia, so the best there is is a couple of um, amateur fighters like Dave here that are blue belts, uh, and that's it. So you see me hit, hitting a... Um, double leg over i hook his legs he posted i'm going for like a reverse kimura after i started teaching videos on arm we use there's only started calling reverse kimura and then i switch it to like a modified double wrist lock kimura whatever grip you want to call that um but people seem to like the this video either because all malaysia likes it or it seems maybe they like it because it's a little bit slower energy and control that i have so it's maybe a better learning tool for beginners white blue belts and whatnot he's going for the umaplata here from like hook guard as i taught him to but you know sifu or holds back some secrets from students to surprise them with so um Duck my head under here and hit him with a toe pull, toe hold counter to the umaplata there. Which can be very effective as a kind of snapped his ankle a little bit. There was a pop, <laughs> but he was okay. Um, I think Dave and Hussein, and this is a kind of a toe pull, toe hold there because it was on the near leg. Don't see that very often. Toe pull I made up here. As you see me lift my knee up to use my leg as a fulcrum on his leg. So, yeah, you see my left knee is risen? It's very important, guys. That's a submission I've made up uh, and can do in kind of different style of half guards. Luck hook guard here. Again, what people call Williams guard. John Williams. I think Shemri deserves some of it, I believe, historically. Um, to Um Plat. And but you know, I had to train too and work them out and get them used to things for their own benefit. Here's Steve, one of my favorite students, uh, Kazakhstan. Tough, tough young kid there. But his dad would write me because he missed this kid and enjoyed watching me uh, beat him up. Well, the triangle, oh. I, guys. I've trained. I've changed how I finish my triangles now. I would z my leg, my left leg oh. out and pinch so I can finish people without even using my hands um, quite often. Double leg over position to the arm scissors here on Hussein. Hussein's a tough guy uh, from Pakistan, I believe, and he's fighting uh, amateur in, in Malaysia, and I think he's doing, I think he's doing well. Von Flu Choke, I think, here. Yep, Von Flu Choke. And guys, a couple weeks ago at uh, UFC in Atlanta, I actually talked to OSP um, for the second time for like 20, 30 minutes about catch wrestling techniques, sharing catch wrestling techniques oh. and stuff. So that was pretty cool. I'm a big fan of OSP. Very nice, uh, soft spoken gentleman. Dave's doing a good job here. Trying to put me back in half guard. Get that double wrist lock. And before you saw Keanu Reeves do it in John Wick 2, hit him with the leg scissors choke. See, I put my own hand in my head there to set up the trap. And then I uh, grab the double wrist lock. Using some... He grabbed his shorts to defend, which is good. And boom, that is... See, I was showing that. He was attached to it. So, so it's kind of a... A lot of this is kind of a teaching tool, guys, because I'm so much better than the people I'm going with. Um, here's the catch wrestling key lock. Old key lock, not that top wrist lock key lock. Old catch wrestling key lock. It's when they grab their shorts or they have a very strong grip to defend. 
Because here's a ch choke I made up because I'm in crucifix. His left arm is between my legs. If you push his face the other direction, he can't rotate either way. He can't turn into you. He can't turn away from you. Both sides are trapped. So I made this slow choke up. I'm really not putting too much pressure on him. Just a little, just enough uh, with my forearm. Obviously, I could be killing him there with my elbow and pressure points, whatnot. Um, but my left um, forearm is totally starting to shut off one artery. And if you could please shut off, shut off one artery, hear him gurgle a bit. It's a choke. You can't turn either way. Such a choke I made up. Interesting transition here. Watch his legs. And, and a lot of these um, Chinese Malaysians were very flexible guys. So I can, and I was so much better, I could control them without hurting them. But his legs in a super precarious position. Basically, I rolled him over with the ham sandwich I talked about in the first video, Mike Pierce. Uh, putting me in so that's really kind of like a calf slicer bar in their legs and I use that to mount with the five finger guillotine here Mounted guillotine whatever you want to call it five finger mounted guillotine So Luke Rockhold do that um, I think Bakhtian's back in Malaysia teaching now He's, he's a family traditional uh, uh, Kali instructor, fights amateur MMA as well. He's more, definitely more a Kali guy and, and a Muay Thai guy, though. Oh, that was another catch key lock, by the way. Going with Han here. And I was in, I think, Blood Cook Guard. Now I'm in New York. Now I go to Crackhead. I was excited because he was a big YouTube fan of mine and then was surprised when, boom, there I am right next to him in Malaysia. So he was really excited to train with me. Um, and he was fluid enough I could do some Sistema type stuff with. Um, you see in other videos, guys, without hurting him. Because I would also teach some of these guys uh, Combatives and Sistema and, and stuff like that, which is good. So he passed, and I, right away I used my legs, and I counter with the toe hold here. So he was doing good, and then I counter with the toe hold uh, improvisational there. Mano Plata, and I already got the leg hook. Put the Mano Plata here. Guys, these are lower level guys, but if you watch me even with higher level guys, my Mano Plata is a submission. It's not just a sweep. And that's because I do it differently on my side. So look at my Mano Plata videos. Uma Plata is taught wrong with this big wide open space with a triangle, which you kind of get away with a bit in a gi, but it's it, it's taught wrong almost everywhere around the world. It's much better looking away on your side with a tight uh, leg pinch on the arm, and then you can slow things down and actually make it a higher percentage uh, submission, like Ben Sa Saunders did in the UFC. Bull fighting with the head. I like that he does that. And he passes and I counter right away though with the reverse triangle and a divorce lock Kimurata type hold. Uh, leg hook guard with the head in. I don't put the head in that often, but uh, there you get the head in. Oh, yeah, this is an uh, interesting submission coming up because my arm's still in and it was kind of a combination TP arm and TP choke because my arm like a chill dog on the neck was right there perfectly on the artery so I used my legs like a TP to squeeze power assist behind the arm so it was kind of an arm and TP choke which I've never seen uh, before or since <laughs> I don't know if you could hear me talking there. This is the cage. So you got a guy spazzing out. Need him to chill out. <laughs> Put him in the cage. This uh, Gokor Shevichian. Saw him do this. And he used the forearm there to set up the top wrist lock. Oh, good job. And he even got it throttled out there. Catch wrestling style. Where he could actually snap the forearm bones. 
This guy was a uh, blue belt. I think this is the first time he came to the school. Blue belt and amateur fighter. Kind of going out the back there. Right here, I got to watch my knee. So you could go for a knee bar, but I got upper body control with the underhook. Scramble up on top with the, the chin strap, it looks like. Push his hips the other way so he can't get guard on me. And knee slide through to the mount. Already had the chin strap, so that turns into a five finger mount of guillotine. Put him in the crucifix position here. I could have finished him with power, guys. I don't use power. Like, I, I, obviously, with the size advantage I often have, and that's just statistical averages, mean averages, people. A lot of smaller people in jiu-jitsu want to be tough. They, they don't want to believe a bigger guy, so they hate on bigger guys, because they, you know, it, it, it's pretty silly. And I get him with a, uh, look like a straight arm bar there with the legs. Did this in other videos. Bait the top wrist lock to near side underhook escape, or what later became called ghost escaping, and people weirdly went crazy for it like it was something new. Here's a um, rolling toe hold. Thinking that was some kind of double wrist lock or variation there. He jumped guard, but he's already balled up people. I didn't tap him out with power. It was biomechanics realizing he jumped in a way where his body was already rolled. There's a Uchimata kind of variation, like Sambo-like, that I see Fedor do. So I, it's actually the wrong angle for the Uchimata, but sometimes I throw my underhook the other direction. I've seen Fedor do that off of punches in yeah. MMA, and that's kind of where I get that from. Here's a Haragosh, I think. Judo people, you probably like have some weird term and debate it like crazy, whether what angle it was taken to or not. Uh, I think knee staple, yeah, knee staple here. So, sort of a top-mounted crucifix there. Uh, not the best control way, but knee staple away. Set up the top wrist lock. That was very John Jones receipt or Belfort finish there. And look at my grip on his right arm here. This is my first ever attempt at it. Never drilled it, so I'm going super slow and careful with it. So there was no back arch or anything. That is a Zangief rule. It's the only time I've ever done it. <laughs> Zingief rule, and then you got the arm lock there, even though it's like on the same side. Double wrist lock, Kamara thing. Uh, cow catcher, him down to the ground. Dave's really going for the ankle lock here. Really going for it. Dave's getting a little, a little tired of getting tapped out all the time. He's power assisting the arm up. Pretty good there. And counter with the heel hook. Mr. Bakhtian here, guys, if you want to learn Kali. Nice guy. Uh, I think that was arm scissors. Yeah, that was arm scissors. Now, this guy's so wide and I have such short legs, guys. Going to a triangle would be difficult. So especially if you have like, short legs or really wide guys, sometimes you just go for the TP and extend the leg straight up to the ceiling, straight up. Squeeze your knees together. Take his base away. Top leg crosses on bottom, guys. And when you're doing an arm bar, um, in this position when you're on top, don't cross when you're in bottom guard because then you'll get slammed. They don't even teach that anymore. <sighs> Unfortunately. Oop. Aaron Burr there on um, Steve. Magic hands, distraction. I don't always do the scorpion rib breaker, but when I do, it's fun. Scorpion rib breaker, scorpion death crush there on the ribs. Wanted to show that. And when a guy sits up like this, guys, just take your time and inch it and inch it and inch it and inch it and carefully so they don't break themselves. Um, 
a lot of what I'm doing, guys, I have so much control because I'm a lot better than the people in this video. With better people, you actually have to be more careful because they might spaz and move them. They might move themselves in a way that hurts themselves. So it's almost easier, it seems counter logic, but almost easier when I'm way better than people because I not only control my body, but I really completely control theirs. So I can keep them safe, even when I'm doing what a lot of people consider very dangerous locks. Uh, Von Flu or Von Pru choke here. Catch wrestling style uh, double wrist lock here, meaning where I have my legs, guys. And I turn that into a hammer lock, and I still control his leg a little bit. Now my body weight's controlling his leg still. So, reverse mount, butt mount. Crawl my legs up to his butt here. Got the two on two Russian cowboy style. I could debore him, finish right away. I want to see if he defends. He's not defending. You know, a lot of what I do is kind of trying to teach the student and do some catch and release. This is very similar. This is before the I told. That's very similar to the Josh Barnett versus here in Gracie match. Uh, there's a duck under the standing arm triangle. I take him down with it. I got the arm triangle, but I switch off to the uh, Gifra. A lot of jiu-jitsu people are open to the gift wrap. They cross their arms when you're mounted to defend gi collar chokes, and that's a bad muscle memory in a lot of ways because really you're crossing your center line, which means you're opening gift wraps and arm triangles. And I use the pressure there with the cobra choke. I finished the cobra choke in the earlier video, guys, and didn't call it out. So uh, cobra choke there, you use the pressure points of your hands on the neck and the fist and whatnot. Um, set up the arm bar. That was a, a backspin knee bar attempt, and then where he points his knee... Again, very flexible person that would already hurt a big guy, and most people like, can't control them and their partner. Very dangerous. Well, don't do this, noobs. It's turning into a sideways knee crank. And I have four waves of setting up the sideways knee crank video. You know, I have people with sideways knee crank. Uh, I think we're drilling from arm breast position. And here, rocking up, using the, you, know, so you should replay it if you want to see how I use my legs there to work the rock up on them. Oh! oh. Let go! <laughs> that would have been a knockout, come on. Did he have his legs crossed? No, I'm systemic grappling him. <laughs> I'm hockey grappling him now. So I'm just kind of floating my hips and stuff. And then now we go into a series of howdy chokes, taught to me yeah. by Dennis Holman. Howdy choke. Finally. Or reverse arm triangle is what um, Derek Paulson was calling to Josh Barnett there here in Greasing, uh, here in Greasing match. Uh, sugar footing over his face. Guys, you could call that sugar footing which sets up the reverse arm triangle or howdy choke position. Watch me bang my hand on the mat, karate chop it. That takes up the slack, takes up the space. That is a very good detail from Dennis Hallman, how to make this actually a very effective and efficient choke and not just crank the guy. And we see it again here, uh, but with a different finish. So I set up the choke, I could finish the choke. You can pinch your nose and mouth smother them there too. But the funnest way and funnest submission in jiu-jitsu is definitely this. You get the howdy choke position, you tickle their ribs, that makes them freak out and go woohoo, or you could actually hurt them depending how you use your energy on the intercostal musters there. And uh, that makes them go to bridge there, which sets up the uh, hooking the leg for the Mishima, Mishima style Cobra Katami. I was actually tempted in the last quintet at, towards the end of it by the eventual uh, winner who really was subbing everybody, a jiu-jitsu guy, and uh, the crowd went crazy um, just when he attempted it. Another leg scissors choke on the neck. Let me keep my legs and spine straight here, knowing eventually he will throw them to the side. I use his Kazushi momentum for the funk roll escape and roll him over. Look for the, the Susan Summers, but he stayed his, he twisted his body down, so I have to go do some crazy modified toehold there. 
That is catch you two style. That is catch wrestling style. I could arm bar him there. Um, but I'm doing some catch and release, guys. Could work on his neck here with the head scissors. Push on the ribs. Get some body weight on him. Drop that arm. And where do I go? Head scissors. I could break the neck there with the head scissors. And I think I finished him with the head scissors. Here's the back adjustment, chiropractic adjustment. Submission. Sink your weight like a bag of rice. Body weight distribution. Gravity can tap people out. It's not just being big. Small people can be ridiculously heavy too. Arm drag, single leg ride to the back there. Um, more Aki grappling system. A stipe grappling here. Head scissors. To back crucifix. Arm control. Switch off. Arm to the crank. Be very careful. This is not for new people to attempt. You'll roll up too fast and not control your body weight. Guys, I have very soft touch and very good sensitivity. Uh, beginners don't see that. There was some Sistema type stuff, if you will. I stepped off his foot quickly there because you could break someone's foot if they have boots on there. So I'm just soft grappling here, Aki grappling here. Got a choke on the neck, plus a you know, kind of a neck break there. Just sagging my weight like a bag of rice. Women for self-defense. I'm trying to take you away. Sag your weight. Pinocchio. A Russian leg hook to Dagestani leg hook his leg there. Fall back. Sambo style. And then show how if he crosses his leg to defend the knee bar, you go to the leg scissors. Going out the back, got a single leg ride, dragging him back on the hip and his arm, adjusting the position. Oh, shit. Oh, now I decide I want to maybe get a wrestler's guillotine, aka Twister. Wrestler's guillotine, guys. Keeping his elbow tight, though, and in real life, wrestler's guillotine takes me about a minute. So, I got sick of it, and I was tired that day, so I just went for the uh, Nana Split Crotch Ripper. And I could break his knee sideways here with a sideways knee crank, just guys' biomechanics of the way that his leg and body where it was. This is stuff I can do that most people don't even see. I could have snapped his knee right there, but I don't, obviously. Back underneath, and what it turns into is the Charles Oliveira calf slicer. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out the next one. Thanks.